Got it then. No. <laughs> Welcome back, Tau Fleeter folks. Jeff and Officer Greg out here, straight chilling with you on a really hot Central California day. Just as soon as we got set up out here, a mighty wind blew through, <laughs> and uh, we had to put all kinds of uh, gear around your cameras back there, as well as a spinal tarp up above, Jeff might show you, to help <laughs> shade the sun. So, sent to us today from constant uh, contributor, Tim, over at uh, the Ballistic Machinist, is the meat hammer he posted it on facebook which i hate facebook but <laughs> no mark there, uh, is, a, is the second coming of jesus yeah but anyway he goes what should i call this thing and someone said tenderizer so he was well with tenderizer it's like come on it well, should be like the uh meat hammer the the, the mace it's a 100 percent copper machined uh six sided it's got six sides on it which side do you even pick and then laser engraved on the side, you're already gonna see by now is a little Tau Flater Mouse logo. So that was a cool little touch that won't be there long. It's a brutal looking round. I mean, it, yeah. I showed it to some friends and they're like, oh my gosh. That's... Much more appropriate that we call it the Meat Hammer, which oddly enough, I know you thought it was a band I was in. No, 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 no. Between 1978 and 1991, I did some exotic dancing. Meat Hammer was my name <laughs> when I was on the stage. So when I was on the pole, anyway, Enough yakking, we're gonna send some of these meat hammers downrange into some different targets, including meat, and uh, see what you guys think what, about What is that first target? That first target is young Douglas. He's waiting for us downrange. He's been texting me, telling me to uh, get the hell off the camera and start shooting. He's waiting for his, he, his part in this. Yeah, he's got a military vest on that a viewer sent that I, I forgot what his name is, I'm sorry. But he sent me this cool vest and we're gonna shoot it. Yeah, Doug's stimmy checks just ran out, so he's actually needing the employment. So he has to come out today and uh, and get shot so that he can get paid. So let's do it. First test, right up in the orange triangle, right? Yeah, little area of the vest that has not been hit yet. The blue tape, also known as the blue, orange triangle. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll see if they're accurate. Let's try it. Oh! Decent recoil. It's loud under here. Oh! Just looking at the high speed, which is as a small screen, it looked like it was flying nice and straight. Yeah, it went a little Just, bit low. He hit the uh, tape though, that's the important thing. Hit the tape, so relatively accurate. What? The meat torpedo? Is that what this is called? <laughs> yes. I can't even remember. Um, we have. <laughs> Because of the torpedo, we have significant bulging back here. And just inside this hole, I can actually feel the round. So Lawrence Welk sound effect right there. <laughs> so we just pulled this thing out. Look at this. Six-sided, Tau Flater Mouse logo, so you know it was the same one. We didn't, uh, no baiting and switching going on out here. Six-sided, you can see all the Kevlar jammed up in there. Ooh. And when we peel it away, and it's really baked on there. You can see the the meat hammer surface. Look at that. It actually mushroomed out a little bit. Yeah, it did. These little wings mushroomed out. Did not expect that. That's Kevlar, though. But That's a pretty cool little... If only we had a new block of ballistic gel. Ah, oh, dang it. Where would we get one? Um, I heard they have them at Morris Levin and in in Son and Tulare. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Is it clear-ish ballistic it's gel? or is It's completely clear. Made out of iced tea? Yeah. It was $130, so... Oh, God. Thanks, Patreons. Yeah. Anyway, that thing's pretty cool. Look at the, the shape of that. Still stayed uh, attached to its, what do you call that? Azot wad. It's, right. it's a Russian wad. He actually used the Russian wad on that. A Russian wad. I recognize it. Azot. A-Z-O-T. Next up is a watermelon setting on a Korean love pillow. Right. So if you've got Korean love in your future, you need one of these. Ew, <laughs> ew it's sticky. So we've got uh, Roger from American Dad here. Just to troll all you Cartoon Network nerds. We'll see what the, what the meat hammer does to a good watermelon. Well, we'll put, we'll put some Kevlar behind it just oh. to catch it. Maybe catch it. Like a so? Uh, it's vertically. Yes. Is that Latin for up and down? It, it's, upside, it's upside down, but no one will notice. I'm trying to, this side's kind of floppy and loose. Oh, you're know, right. I don't know if it's Yeah, gonna... that might catch it. Hold on. Okay. All right, here we go. When you're ready. I'm ready. Oh. Oh, that was some good explosion. That was good. 
Okay, what, what is this next target, Greg? Not really sure. Kind of looks like one of the Hills Have Eyes people. <laughs> it's just a clay dude impersonating another dude. The clay block's kind of boring, so. so... We made it into a ball with a face. Now yeah. It's, it's unboring. Yeah. It's about to be vaporized, let's hope. Okay, I'm ready whenever you are. Here we go. I'm going to aim between the eyes, and hopefully we can hit him on the nose. Whoa! That opened him up. There's nothing left. As many people who like the meat target, there's a lot of people who think it's disgusting, and it is kind of gross. You're but right, it's disgusting. <laughs> Those people ought to be out here right now smelling what we're smelling. Yeah, it's... We're inhaling ridiculous uh, odors for you. So, so, this pork, what is it, pork shoulder? Pork shoulder arm, picnic hole. Make up your uh, mind, is it an arm, is right. it a shoulder, is it a... However, the one thing that we do know it is, is expired. We don't shoot good food because YouTube Nancy's get all over us. They really so, do, you know? Yeah, I so. hate wasting food too, but if it's, you know, if it's gonna give you botulism or something. Right, then... but it's for science. Yeah. I mean, we're not wasting live mice or cadavers. Right. So this one expired in 1982. <laughs> so it's actually uh, good to be shot now. So it says best if used by Halloween 1982. And I should mention it's, it's partially frozen. It's mostly frozen in the middle. Yeah. We're gonna shoot it the long ways there, if, yeah, it'll, so if it'll stand up. You can see that it's not very thick, so if we hit it this way, blow right on the other side. Yeah. So we're gonna try to shoot it lengthwise here and get more meat. More meat for your meat blasting dollar. Here we go, right on the purple square. Ooh. Ooh, wow, that took it for a ride. I don't think it went through. Reaction to that. Wow! <laughs> a lot of damage god i hate those reaction videos okay anyway so, just me we found uh we found this little flared out uh little crown here laying on the ground right next to it it evidently went through hit our kevlar and landed on the ground so it went through the pork it made a big old gnarly wound in here it's frozen right this is still yeah there's hard chunks in here so yeah it's still frozen but here's the cool thing i don't know if we can even get a good view into the surgery here maybe from the top oh man um, kids turn away turn let me, away let me kids. cut this one section out but this big old bone right here was shattered right the, that slug went right through that bone Ooh. so it went through frozen pork shattered this big big thick bone that's about i don't know roughly the size of a femur this is all bone fragments in here everywhere and then blasted out the the back right here wow hit the kevlar we think and toppled onto the ground yeah so that's crazy. That's a that's a lot of damage right there. And it took it out of the wrapper too, which was a, yes, it unwrapped it for us. That was kind. That's a big old meat wound. <laughs> Hit by a meat torpedo. Yeah, the meat. That's why they call it the tenderizer. The, the meat, meat hammer. The the meat torpedo. The in, mace. The, insert comments about your ex-wife here. That, if you have a better name for these, throw it out there. Maybe maybe Tim will use it. You know. <laughs> It's got. I mean, it's got to be like PG or something, though. No, nah, not necessarily. <laughs> the meat hammer can be taken so many different ways. Well.
about the world famous lead plate? Yeah, weighs about 30 pounds. Real, made a real good coin. Yeah. Aiming at the blue piece of tape. Yep. How confident we are in these. We haven't been bad for accuracy. Yeah. Okay, I'm running and rolling. Here we go, on the blue tape. Okay. Okay. Slug went a little bit right on this one. That could be the shooter's error though. Still nicked the edge of the tape. And I don't know if you guys can tell on camera, there's little individual gouge marks there where the little points, the little uh, meat hammer points, hit the uh, lead in, in a non-smooth pattern. And then Jeff found over there, just about parallel to his camera shooting position, this lovely thing. You can kind of still see it's this little star shape, part of it at least, and the little center uh, piece. It mangled the crap out of it and lost a bunch of its mass. This is very, very light compared to how it started out, so it's lost a bunch of its mass there, but you can still see it here, and here's what's cool. Tough Later Mouse logo was still preserved right there. <laughs> but man, did a bunch of damage to that thing. Look at yeah. The, look at that hollow. You see the base of it. Base. Okay, That's, I, I, now I know how he attached it. And it's all about the base, really. Yeah, we well, gotta attach no, that no Azot wad. Right. Or is it Azot? <laughs> I don't know. I'm not Russian. Okay, what we got next here? Jeff's got a new block of clear, actually clear ballistic gelatin. It says right there on the certification, quality control. So um, bought locally, it's actually clear. This is unpenetrated. It remains unpenetrated at this time. I should have like, he used a heat gun on it, but and I did, but it got all wrinkly again. Hello? I don't have that fancy heat gun, portable heat gun, like. You like, know, Buffalo Outdoors oh, has. Oh yeah, like Buffalo has. But we got a covering kind of like him today, though. Yeah, yeah. So we got a, a block of clear ballistics gel, 16 inches long. We're going to try the meat hammer in one end of it, see what kind of wound track it does. We know that it it's accurate. We know that it penetrates well, but we're going to see what kind of a wound track it would make in, uh, you know, approximate animals. We have not strapped down the clear ballistic gel block because when we try to tie it down, we end up blocking your view. Yeah. So uh, we tried with some bungees, we tried with some tape and stuff like that, but we're just gonna end up we blocking We tried to your stick, view. leaving it in the box, you yeah. know, so it won't get dirty. So you're gonna see in slow motion, it's probably gonna hop up. Hopefully it doesn't leave the table. Maybe it does, I don't know. Um, we're hoping it'll, the slug will be caught in that, but also that might stop the block from falling on the ground. But yeah. here's I'm, the thing, you can just wash it off. Right. How about that? How about that? It's still clearish. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm betting the slug passes through and hopefully we can catch it in the Kevlar. Yeah. All right, let's give it a try. Anytime. All right, here we go. Oh, on its end. No. <laughs> Actually, I was joking about running over there. No, but it's, it was slow. I thought maybe I'd get it. All right, here we go. Oh, on its end. Happened, Greg? Well, we got a gigantic wound track in there. Look at that thing. And then, clearly, you have uh, noticed by now two little pedals have snapped off and veered north. Look at that. But the primary wound track here, look at that. Oh, it's got a finger in it. Hey. That wound track is massive in there. The round exited out the back and a tiny little, uh, little star. And we caught it over here in the first layer of Kevlar. Caught it like a catcher's mitt. There's its base, it's azot. There's the two pedals that broke off, look at that. I didn't expect that to happen. A little bit and of... the other ones flared out. Yeah, they always flare out like a little crown. But those two almost look like they fatigued off of there. Look at that, yeah. they just snapped. Maybe you can work off that and make it actually 
expand better or something, make the cuts different angles or something yeah, like that. I wonder if making them deeper in here would make them flare up. What the hell do I know about yeah. metallurgy or bullet making? Exactly. <laughs> but my theory, but it's, that's like everybody in the comment section, sure. though. My theory is if these cuts were a little deeper, I wonder if those little crown points would spread out into almost like... I didn't, uh, I didn't think gel would cause that to open up like that. No, that's... That's really cool. When I bring this home, I'm gonna you hit it with a heat gun again. Then we'll be able to see a little better. Yeah, look at that. Straight through. Straight through. You can see this is where it did its expanding right here, and it and lost its pedals. So. Yeah, two pedals. And remember, folks, ballistic gel is not supposed to be exactly like a human. It's Who a, started that? Was it MythBusters that started that? I, I guess so. It, it, or maybe just use it, it's perfectly simulate the human. No, it, it's, it doesn't because it, there's no. It's just fat, a fat. There's no muscle. No, there's no. no bone. There's no cartilage. That pork shoulder we shot actually better uh, replicates a human than this does. It really does. But this is a just a frozen human. Yeah, frozen human. This is only to have a consistent test medium amongst all bullets. Yeah. So we know that the way this round reacts to uh, a different slug is going to be consistent because this material is consistent. So. Yeah, so, so some guy on the East Coast using the same gel, you know, can get comparative yeah. results. Yeah. Does not mean it's going to pass through 16 inches of human, although I bet it would. Yeah, yep, yeah, that one I think would. But impressive round though, Tim. Yeah. What do you got next there? We have legless Doug. He's down here on the ground kneeling. Um, we have a ballistic helmet that is roughly military uh, mil spec. It, it stops the same thing as a military grade helmet. Sure. Just don't plan on it stopping bullets going into your head, whether you're in the military or airsofter. <laughs> um, sent to us by Atomic Defense. So it's time to just keep on shooting this thing. We put a piece of painter's tape down here over the ear section of Doug so we can hit him uh, profile from the side with one of the meat hammers and see what it does to his old ballistic helmet. Will that helmet protect him? You be You decide! Gun. Oh. oh wow. Oh. Oh wow. Hey, okay, walk it off there, Doug. Oh, never mind. Walk it off. Can you hear me now? <laughs> well, look at this. It's got actually the little shape of those little uh, those little crown points in there. Cut into the plastic uh, liner here. Smacked into the Kevlar. Let's uh, let's unbuckle Doug here. Knocked his lens out of his glasses. Yeah. I hope those weren't those are your glasses. Those are my old those are my old glasses. Okay, I know where the lens is. Look at yeah, I don't really need them. Look at that. Look at that inside. That was some pretty impressive damage because that, I mean that, I think that was the two ounce slug. Yeah, that's the old. Yeah. But I mean, look, look at the pattern it tattooed in the side there versus the two ounce slug. Yeah. So it carved a big hole, filleted all of these laminated. These are laminated Kevlar pieces here. Yeah, there it is inside. There's, oh, yeah. They must have like bionic strength or something. Here's the base to... of it. Wow. So this is kind of cool, the layers we found. We just finally dug this out after about 15 minutes of digging with some uh, pliers. So it flared out, which caused it to kind of anchor itself into like, the uh, like Kevlar. Push fish hooks, yeah. like a wool anchor or something. Yep. And then when we got this out, we can see that not only is there burnt tape down in those crevasses, but we found this layer of melted plastic. So it just kind of caught everything and took it with it. Yeah, and it... It went almost, it almost made it through. There was like two layers of this that it stopped it. Yeah, we had to saw down through this just to relieve the pressure on it. And then we pulled it out backwards. So the thing definitely burrowed itself in it there. Pretty decent. Very and good. we learned a little something here about crime. If you're ever going to do a drive-by shooting, don't have your logo engraved on the side. <laughs> These logos have been 100% uh, preserved, I think, every time. Yeah. Every time we've recovered a slug. So look at that beautiful base. Well, that's it. Pretty cool. That's it. So, there's what we learned. Homemade, mach hand machined copper rounds from Tim Hamilton are good to go. We shot them only from a smoothbore today, so we don't know what they would do with rifling, but. And that was kind of a mistake on my part. Uh, we shot the last one, I go, you realize we forgot to shoot it through full rifling. Oh, sorry. But, but it, it works really so well. well. It works so well through smoothbore. It's like, right. how could rifling been any better? Right. And Tal Flater law number 97 is rifling makes everything better. So how could they be more accurate than accurate? Uh, yeah. I don't know. They would have been spinning. But that's a pretty impressive round. It's got a little bit of expansion to it. Retained its weight. Cool looking design before and after. Absolutely. And, uh, it's got good penetration. So 
We thank you. I don't know what. Well, I have no idea what the intended use is. Is it for boar hunting, home defense, uh, hammering meat? Meat hammering meat, and or we did that. Torpedoing meat. Didn't you decide you're just going to change the patent on it to the meat torpedo? Or I something? like that. It's Sure. Everyone Google meat torpedo right now and <laughs> no. see what you come up with. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for joining us out here. We got to pack up because it's still pretty dang hot and we're getting blown out of here. So it's like Tatooine out here. So uh, whatever that is. Well, you know, all the all the Star Trek nerds know what that is. <laughs> Battle, Battleship Galacticus. Half the things you say, I have no idea what you're saying. It's I think like that means numbers. I'm getting old. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by, though. We appreciate you. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Kapow.